Hi, you guys. So we're back, and today I am a little into the weather right now. So if you hear a little congestion, I'm sorry. But uh, I just want to talk about my favorite movie that has been getting me through my current bedriddenness, and that is All Eyes. So this movie, I actually have, I it came out, I bought it September 2022 on YouTube, and um, I've rewatched it several times since then, uh, to uh, to the point that I have noticed certain uh, discrepancies and stuff, but we're not gonna get into that. So, All Eyes is it's described as like a thriller, um, and basically the I think the general recap is like a disgraced podcast host visits like a farmer to hunt monsters in his backyard or something like that. Uh, that's like the gist of the story. But like the movie, you can kind of break it down into three parts, I think. Because there's like the first third of the movie is kind of the setup where you're getting um, obviously introduction to like Alan, the podcast, uh, the main character. And then the second part of the movie, I feel, is like Don's story, like Alan's story with Don. And then the third part of the movie is Alan's story, like trying to survive. Um, we're not we're going to we're going to. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Okay. So, All Eyes, my current favorite movie. So, we start off, Alan is the host of a show. It's called U.S. Sane on the American Radio Network or something like that. American Public Radio. APR, yeah. American Public Radio Network. And um, he starts off with this one. Um, so, the show is basically viewers and people sending in stories. Like, he interviews people. On his podcast and he shares their stories of like paranormal activity weird shit us saying and like this particular episode that he's doing uh he's going live with this guy called mark and mark is this is mark's second uh time on the show so the first time the reason that mark came back his story was so intriguing is not because of his like full lower lip and like chiseled face um but because he his story was that he was being followed around by a shadow person his whole life, and he had evidence. As you can see down here, there's a shadow arm next to him in this photograph that he sent in. And so the thing about this particular live stream that was kind of like wild, like the reason that Mark called back is because he had new information, he had new developments. And these developments was that he caught it. He caught the shadow person that has been following him around. So obviously people start to be like, okay, this is wild. This is a little weird. Like it's getting a little sketch. Cause it's like, what do you mean you caught the radio, like the, the shadow person that's following you around. And so, um, Mark just goes on to be like, yeah, I caught the person. Oh no. Then we cut to this, like, there's this door, this like hallway, this doorway that we see this like, and there's like plastic all around. And then you hear like a banging and there's this like woman's voice being like, Mark, Mark, what's happening, Mark? And then, like, Mark, he goes on to, like, explain to Alan that he's already called the police on himself. And this is something that he's had to do so that he can just go on with his life. It's it's his purpose. It's what he has to do. So the producer that's, like, listening to Alan in the background is, like, call 911. But, like, the cops have already been called. So basically, all we hear, we cut to just, like, we're just looking at Alan now. But, like, what you hear is, like, um... The mark, the mark, the mark. Then you hear screams and then you hear police and then you hear gunshots. So I think the police killed Mark before Mark was able to kill whoever he had trapped, whoever his shadow he had trapped. And that's the setup. That's the that's the beginning of the movie, if you will. That's the first scene. So after this ordeal, like, you know, live streaming a viewer getting caught or whatever, getting caught, not getting caught, but like killed. It's like Alan gets fired, obviously, because in many people's eyes, he has been enabling people that are mentally ill um, to like, he just, he enabled their behavior. He encouraged it. He enabled it. So, um, you know, he like releases a statement. He has an interview where he's like, oh, you know, like, uh, I shouldn't have had him on the first time. I shouldn't have had him on the second time. This is a huge mistake on my part. Blah, 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 blah. 
um right here this is this is his box of freaks um this is a box that he had where like people come in they send letters they send him his stuff and then he like just puts it aside he prints it out he puts it in the box he's like mark's letter sat in there for weeks or for months i forget um but basically he does his whole apology like the youtuber apology where it's like i'm sorry blah 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 i should have done my due diligence only thing is that this is on a network it's not his personal youtube channel so he got fired so um we like cut to him at home he's just kind of sulking around around his pool he throws away his little uh his apr host of the year award um floaties in the pool floaties in the pool um, but his producer comes to visit him that night and she has like the box of freaks. She like grabs it and she's like, you know what, Alan, I forgot what the producer's name is. I'm so sorry. I should have done more research before starting this video, but I don't know the producer's name. I know Alan's name, the podcast host. So she tries to convince Alan that like somewhere in that box, there is a letter, there's a story that is going to get his job back, that's going to get APR to be like, you know what, there's, there, there's something here, Alan. There's something in here. So they go through the box, they open the box, they go through the letters, and she comes across this one letter. It's like a little greeting card, thinking of you, catches her attention. And so she just, she starts to read it. And it's a letter from this man named Don Thomas. And it goes like uh what does it say I, I kind of almost have it it's like dear mr wolf my wife jean my late wife jean basically okay don thomas just basically explains to him that his wife died and his wife loved his his show his radio show is what he calls it and he says that like before she died she would listen to it every single week she loves it. He, on the other hand, Don, hates him. Hates his show, hates it, thinks it's stupid and all that shit. Um, he says, however, I have a story for you. In the woods behind my house lives a monster with a thousand eyes. And um, I'm trying to kill it or whatever. A hell of a story awaits for you. This is really dangerous. So I've attached a check with $25,000. Um, should you accept the check is unsigned, come meet me at the PO box at Hobart, Oklahoma. I'm there every Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. So she really wants to convince him to let go. She's like, this is one hell of a story. And on top of it, like there's a $25,000 check. Should the story not get you something, you've got 25K right there. So after like a lot of back and forth or whatever, Alan accepts and we make our way to Hobart, Oklahoma uh the main setting of the story so alan shows up and he's inconspicuous obviously trying to fit in like a local and um not doing a very good job so he just starts uh talking to himself in his car like podcasting he's like i'm here this is insane what the hell am i doing i am super crazy for even considering this oh my god okay so no we're not gonna get into it yet one of the it's one of the plot holes but and it's actually something that i literally just thought of right now but i'll get into it when i get into it so that's when we're introduced to don don thomas one of my favorite characters i have come across to date right now like don is such a real person that's the thing the thing about don is that i know this man like i know this man i've come across many versions of this man and a part of me there this man is inside of me somewhere like kind of and don hates him his wife loves it he's doing this for his wife like don loves his wife so much like ah i love it i love it i love it so signs the check and don is like follow me in my grain truck and then he's like what grain truck and so he follows him on his grain truck. And then we get to what I think is uh, the first like major scene in the movie. I think like this is like um, obviously the first scene sets up why Alan embarks on this journey. But this scene, I think, really shows you this scene really starts to show you Don. 
So you were introduced to Don with the card, with like the the greeting card, and like you can deduce that he loves his wife and he's doing this, you know, for that, whatever. So they pull over on the side of the road and Don tells him, okay, get out of your car, put on this blindfold and hop in the back of my truck. Like this is as far as you're driving. Like you can't know where I live. And Alan's like, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. And then Don proceeds to read Alan the filth. He's like, I see right through you. I don't like you and I don't need you. Like you are an entertainer and all this other shit. And just like really, you know, reads him the filth. And then Alan is like, yes, like, yes, yes. You know what? Yeah, that's all fucking true. Like, hello, I'd be crazy. Anyways, we in this scene, we get like, um, like Don at one point, Don's voice starts to crack because he's like, I don't like you, but my wife, she, the, oh, my God, I'm going to start to cry. <laughs> This guy, this actor, what's his name? Ben Hall, I think is his name. Ben Hall is the guy that plays Don Thomas. This man, this son of a bitch, fucking pulled on my heartstrings like no one. Like, like the way that I, I, I went into this movie expecting a thriller, and I came out being like, the fuck? Like, why am I crying more than I did in The Boy With Striped Pajamas? The fuck? Like, what? Anyways, basically... He just, he goes on to be like, I don't need you. I'm doing this because I've got a hell of a story and my wife's favorite show. I, if I can get it back on the air, then I will. And I know that my story can do that. Um, so <laughs> I'm about to fucking, I need a moment. So, uh, so you got to watch this movie. Honestly, you got to watch this movie. This movie has, Ben gives it, the, uh, What's his name? Don. Don gives it so much heart. Like, there's so much heart in this movie. It's like, it's so, I love it. I love it. Because it's like, it's it's so real. And it's like, honestly, now that I think about it, it's very similar to Brokeback Mountain. Sim similar, like, that same type of, like, longing, sadness, except it's a different type of sadness. Because, like, it's not like, you know, closeted cowboys. Anyways, so, Alan agrees, puts on the blindfold, and hops in the back of the truck. And we make our way to Don's farm, where, like, when Alan gets off, he's like, e why do you have a P.O. box if you got a mailbox? And Alan and Don, he's like, well, I want people to know where I live. So, not really, like, important or whatever, like, crucial to the plot, but it just rounds out the character, like, Don's character, you know? Like, he does not want people to know where he lives. He does not want to interact with strangers. Like, he is really going out of his way to deal with this motherfucker. So, we make our way into Don's house. Inside of Don's house, we can see that it's a minimalist decor and it's very wood. I love it. I honestly love it. Like, it takes me back to, like, being a, grand like a kid in my grandparents' house <laughs> and shit like that. Uh, just like the wood paneling something about that. It's so retro. I love it. I love it It's honestly there were times in my life where I'd see like the wood paneling and I'd be like this is so dated And it is a very dated look, but it's like it's cozy. It's warm. It's like it's homey You know like if you have if you see like wood paneling and there's like a floor that's like creaky and there's like a, a Stained couch. It's like you feel comfortable. You feel, I feel comfortable. I feel at home so, um, basically, we're just introduced to Don's house. He gives him a towel. He's a wonderful host, as we can see. And then right here, um, uh, Don is explaining to him, like, just whatever you do, don't touch that light switch. Remember, if it is red, you could be dead, is what he says. And then we, like, go outside. And the movie takes, like, a different beat. So, like, up until this point... The movie has kind of been very dramatic, I would say. Like, um, cause like you start off in that scene, like in the beginning, where like at the podcast, and he kills someone, and then he's like, you know, it's very dark, 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 and then you like get to like the point of like put on your like blindfold, blah blah blah. It's been very drama themed up until this point, and then, like after this scene, they step outside. And it changes tone, like, 
quickly. Like, the thing about this movie is, like I said, it's like, it feels like there's multiple parts in this movie. There's, like, different movies within the movie. It, like, it's a genre bender, if you will, because you can't really place it in any one spot because there's so much to it. So, like, once they step outside, in my opinion, it it takes on, like, a... Um, you know the TV show Shit's Creek? Like, the... Dun, 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 when, like, it starts to play the music and then it, like, goes outside, like... When, like, it's changing scenes, like, in between scenes, it, like, it starts to, just, like, do, like, the B-roll shit, and it's playing that song. That's the vibe that this scene gave me, because they walk outside, and Don is, like, basically explaining that he has his whole property booby-trapped. Um, he, he first makes Alan give him a cell phone. No cell phones allowed, and Alan's like, I don't have any service. He's like, give me your phone. So he just gives him his phone, and then he, he walks around. He's, like, explaining this place is booby-trapped. You got to be careful. Stick with me. You'll be fine. Um, remember, if it's red, you could be dead. And um, then he gives him a little envelope that's um, instructions on what Alan should do in case shit should hit the fan. So we move on. Alan is like, um, obviously thinking, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? Uh, he's worried because Don doesn't know every single booby trap that he has set up in the place some he has forgotten about so we're just really building the character of don here so we go into don's workshop and for some reason the director prominently placed this like horse calendar around which like you wouldn't really notice until like the fifth watch so unimportant if you're just like a casual viewer but like once you see it you're like oh yeah there's like there's the horse calendar that don has in his workshop um, oh, so, so the horse calendar is date June 2021, June 10th, 2021 is the date. Um, the check that Don sent him is dated December 21st, 2019. This letter was written to him after Gene died, after his radio show was, wait, no, wait. Okay, no, wait, my theory was wrong. Okay, so I was like, I thought that Don's letter had uh, talked about how like, this will help get your show back on the air, but no, no, no. So the letter does not reference that at all. Basically, Don has a hell of a story that Gene would have wanted on the show. So that's why like, that's why Don wrote the letter. Don wrote it in 2019 though. And Alan showed up in 2021. So, but there was another thing that I had noticed. What was it? I don't know. I don't know what else I had noticed. So point is, we're here, we're in the thing, and he's, uh, Alan's really trying to build a story, he's trying to get to know Don, he's like, um, so these booby traps that you got, like, what do you mean, like, everything's a booby trap, or what's a booby trap, and then he, like, points to this truck, this, like, blue truck, he's like, is this a booby trap, and then Don is like, no, what's wrong with you, why would, like, and it's like, in his eyes, there's like a hurt when Alan suggested that the truck was like a trap or like a booby trap or something. And like, if you watch the whole movie, then like, you know what's in the truck at the end. But like, Don doesn't go into that truck. Don doesn't use that truck. And I'm wondering if it's because that truck is associated with like good memories of like Gene. If that truck is like a reminder of like <laughs> his wife. <laughs> And so, like, for Alan to even suggest it, he's, like, he's fucking, he's hurt. It's, like, the fuck? Fuck. Like, you know, you know that kind of man? You know that kind of person? We all know this kind of person. Most of us know this kind of person. The person that doesn't know how to show affection, doesn't know how to show love, but, like, obviously feels it. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm obviously not one of those people, okay? Like, if I love you, I will show you that I love you. Obviously, I have no problem with showing emotion. But, like... There's those people that have trouble how to express how they feel, how to express what matters to them, what they care about. 
and they express it in such wild ways in such weird ways in ways that will confuse you and make you think they fucking hate you sometimes i don't know it's so strange but obviously like people are very different everybody's unique and like we've all got different ways of expressing ourselves in any ways i don't know i just wanted to point that out i just wanted to point out like And so if you've watched this whole movie, you know at the end what's in the truck, like in the in the compartment or whatever, and it's like Don obviously never went into the truck, you know, like he doesn't go into that truck. And it's like you know, like too many memories or what? Like he couldn't get rid of it, but like he couldn't get into it. I don't know. It's just so much <laughs> I definitely am overlooking into this holy shit I need a break I need a break I need a moment I can't do this <laughs> this movie makes me cry so many times and it's all because of Don just because of how much he loves his wife like shit anyways how do I find someone that loves me like that god damn that loves me that much so Alan starts to look around Don's workshop and, uh, you know, on the calendar, just like to do kill beast. That's literally the only thing on Don's to do list. Um, he noticed that there's like camera system. He goes and he has like a surveillance room. He's like, the fuck? Like this place is really like Don's not like it's not all talk. Like this place is clearly rigged up like there's shit going on here. So they like take a seat and Don starts to explain to him, like tells him about the first time that he saw I. I is the name of the, I is the name that Don has given the monster. I, oh I, thousand eyes, covered in eyes. This is a drawing that Don has made about I, the monster. And um, then there's just like a little flashback to like the night that Don saw I. He had like a gun, he was in his underwear, um, but he like cowered down and he like ran away. And then it cuts back and he's like, I can't wait to kill her. Right there. So Don just goes on to show Alan like uh, how he has this bait. Um, he has this like, he has like a sack of like, you know, just bait, like cow guts, intestines, shit like that, like bad, bad, bad smelling stuff um, with explosive, rigged with explosives so that um, I comes, eats it, and then Don detonates it and it blows up, kills I. Um, and then down here, the bottom shots where they're out in the field looking into the woods behind Don's house, that is what Don uh, considers monster hunting. When Don says that he's monster hunting, that's what he meant. That's what he means. Um, and just like character building, Don is a wild man that opens a can of Vienna sausages and proceeds to drink the water instead of spilling it throwing it out he drinks that fucking water and it's like jesus fucking christ jesus christ don jesus christ <laughs> so they're monster hunting for a while just sitting there and alan is obviously trying to build a story build his podcast he's like i noticed you got a horse over there and don's like <clears throat> don's like not my horse. I don't give a shit about that horse. Fuck that horse. That horse is fucking stupid. It showed up one day and it just wouldn't leave. So I built a fence around it so that it wouldn't get hit by something. Uh, Don does not care about that fucking horse. Fuck that horse. And the night turns to day. And Don just basically wakes up from his slumber while he was monster hunting and says, time for bed. And he goes to bed. Um... And Alan is obviously left confused. He's like, the fuck? Like, that was the day? That was it? Like, what? So, this next scene, uh, this is just me, a personal question from the Bend Me Over YouTube channel to the director, creators. I think the name is Todd Greenlee, uh, Alex Green. I don't know. I think it's Todd Greenlee. This next scene. So, by default, I'm assuming Alan is straight, hetero. So, um, I am not. So, my logic, two men out in the middle of nowhere, two single men out in the middle of nowhere. It's late night. Let's, you know, okay, we're going to hit the bed. Okay, let's go hit the bed. Should we hit the shower first or after? I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. 
However, comma, I'm assuming Alan is hetero and Don is hetero. So, like, this next scene confuses me. Because this next scene doesn't really make sense. Uh, like, as to why... So, Don says, go to bed. Alan says, what? And then you can see Don slamming his bedroom door in Alan's face. So I'm like, why did Alan follow Don back to his bedroom? You know, like, what? Like, what? Why are we doing this? I, as a gay, can see the logic. But as a straight, I don't see the logic for the straight. So just a question is, at no point do have we gotten into, like, the dynamics of Alan's sexual preferences. But... I am just curious, um, you know, is he, was he trying to suckle on Don? Anyways, so Alan can't sleep because he's horny. No, I'm kidding. That's not why. <laughs> Alan can't sleep. He just stays up uh, talking to his microphone, filling out his podcast. Um, and then he's like watching, right? Does this? Yeah. So then he's watching a movie, and personally, again, I think that this specific scene of, like, the old movie is unnecessary, but I think it's the way that, like, the director, like, the creators are, like, reminding the viewer that, like, of what monster movies, like, classically are, you know? Because, like, I think nowadays in 2024, 2020, like, at the time of this was 2021, 2022... People have gotten spoiled with, like, what CGI can create. And that requires money. And this was, like, a low-budget creation. So I think it's just, like, I think it's a really well-made movie. Like, it's so well-made for what the budget. Like, it, I love this movie. But I think it's just, like, I think it's the directors being, like, yo, manage your expectations, like, don't be expecting no fucking avatar level cgi like calm your tits don't be expecting no top gun level cgi okay calm your tits calm calm down just manage your expectations and let let get, get into the story get into the story of it all i think is the point because look at the mothman So these images are a little bit dark. You can't really see it. But Alan goes outside in the middle of the night. He still can't sleep after he watched the movie. And he's like petting the horse. And then they notice off in the distance, there's like these lights. And there's like movement in the woods behind Don's house in the middle of the night. And like then the lights go away. And then all you like the, it cuts back to like the horse's eye. And it's like the horse knows, you know, the horse knows Anyways, we cut to the next day. Alan wakes up. He slept in, obviously, because he couldn't sleep. Wakes up, and then, like, uh, he opens this, like, closet door. I think is like, right here behind Prinkster the Clown poster. He, like, opens the door, and he sees that there's a hammer type of, like, booby trap thing behind the thing. That, like, obviously is going to, like, go whoop. And then he, like, gently backs out. So Alan is learning that there are many booby traps. There are many, many booby traps. Don was not lying. Yeah, story building. This is important to like the plot or whatever because like it sets it up for stuff later. But like um, it's getting it's like we're getting to know the house because I think honestly, by the end of the movie, the house within itself is a character. But we're just we're getting to know the house. So. Uh, goes outside and Don has left a lovely little note. Don't expect to see anything if you keep on sleeping in like a baby. Don. This is just another setup. Um, Alan is brushing his teeth and then he goes to get some water and he pulls out like a blade. So it's like, you know, you really don't know what you've got, where you got in this house. He steps outside. It's a new day. And we look to the right. We look to the left. And we notice that the horse is gone. So we go up to Don. By we, I mean Alan. We go up to Don. And 
you know, to the monster hunting session. And we're just like, yo, Don, the horse is gone. Thank God we didn't give a shit about that fucking piece of. And he like puts the microphone. He's like, and it's like, oh, <laughs> Don fucking gets you guys. Don just fucking gets you. But anyways, Don just wipes away his tears and he's like, yep, yep, yep. Today's the day, Alan. I can feel it. Today's the day. It's going to happen. And then we just time passes. We're monster hunting. And so a lot of time passes. And Don falls asleep to the point that he's like dead. And Alan is like just podcasting. He's like, we're wasting time out here. Don is basically dead. Like the monster could come out right now and it wouldn't matter because he's basically dead. And then he's like, actually, I think he is dead. And he's like, Don? Don? Don, I need to shit. And the movie shifts. Don needs to take a shit, and the movie shifts. This is when the movie shifts tone big time. I need to shit. It like, so like, the first, everything that I've just spoken about right now was just set up, really, just set up, setting it up, setting it all up. And now it's like, we're going, like we're moving, we're moving. So Don gets up, he gotta take a shit. He runs into the woods. Alan stays behind, waiting for Don to come back from taking his shit. His, 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 his sleep-destroying shit. And uh, eventually, Don's little monster hunter, his voltmeter, his electric, his somehow rigged up to become a monster meter, starts to go off. It starts to beep, 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 beep. So Alan is like, uh, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? I don't know what's happening. How do I switch this? What do I do? Ah! And he decides that he needs to go in to the woods after dawn. But because the Volter monster meter, whatever is going off, that must mean that the monster is nearby, right? So he's a little scared. So he like goes into the woods with some protection and he comes, Don comes like running at him. And he's like, Alan, Alan. He found, he came across this guy that's like in like a hazmat suit, if you will. And he like chased him off and he dropped, the guy dropped his walkie talkie. So Don picked it up, came back. And then through the walkie, you can hear um, this, there's the voice of a woman comes in. No, actually, I think it's the voice of a man who's like, okay, guys, like, let's bring it in, bring it in. And then all good. And then there's a voice of a woman who's like, yeah, we're fine. But, and then she says that like her coworker, one of her other teammates or whatever, um, lost his walkie. And she's like, just listen to what he has to say. And the dude comes on the walkie and he's like, yeah, some crazy dude with his pants down came, like started chasing me and uh, blah, blah, blah. So then they're like, what do you think? You know, do you think he knows about 878? They say 878, which is the number of the monster. I obviously it's I's identification number. They say, I don't know. I'm not really sure. And then they point out that um, they had seen a little farmhouse when they were doing their scoping the previous night. So obviously those people were what um, Alan had seen at night with the horse. The light, those lights that were like disappearing and coming on and like walking in through. I believe it was a director that was just wandering around the woods. Because, like, if you look closely, there's a white figure. There's, like, a man that's dressed in white that's, like, just, like, walking around in front. And I noticed it because I, I was, like, watching it. I have YouTube Premium. I don't know if it's a thing that YouTube allows everywhere. But, like, I have YouTube Premium. And, like, on my phone, you can zoom in to videos. So, like, <clears throat> I zoomed in, like, ten times. And there's just, like, some man, like, walking around the woods. Like, just creeping. So, that's who they were the night before, the night prior. And so now uh, they say, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna go hit up that house that you saw and we need to figure out if that's the person. So they go, they start running. Alan and Don, they start hauling ass back to the house.
Okay, so this is one of my discrepancies. I'd just like to point out to the director slash story creator slash everybody that made it. Why is the house turning on at this point? Because Don and Alan are technically running back to the house, yes, but like Don, nobody's flipped the switch, nobody's touched the tablet, and uh, Don didn't say into his thing like Showtime or thing like that. So personally, I don't understand why the house turned on at this point. I want to assume it's just, honestly, I've been trying to figure out, like I've been trying to create like points in my head like to like reason like why the house turned on and i'm like is it don's watch so i'm like but then i like i've watched the scene and i'm like at no point does he say the things that like you know would make the house turn on so to the director why why that little cut that i feel like that that part of the gears turning and the light turning on shouldn't have turned on that fast because they run into the house and the red light is on and Alan looks at the red light. So it's like, why is the red light on right there at that point? Like, technically, nothing has been activated yet. Technically. So we're just going to erase all of that from our memory because you technically have only seen this movie once. You have not seen it in absurd amount of times like I have to start noticing these things and being like, wait, that doesn't make sense right there. So we run back to the house. The people are trying to get to the farm and Don, he's like going through his room and he comes out with his tablet and then he like shows it to Alan and it's like he's just his whole entire property is armed and ready, like rigged from here to Timbuktu and it's all on that control panel of that little tablet. And then Alan is trying to reason him being like, why does it need to be a battle? Like, why can't we just talk? So they start talking like the micro, like the walkie talkie. They're like, we know you're in there. And then um, he's like, why does it have to be a battle? Like, they just want to talk. Like, let's just talk. It doesn't need to, we don't need to do anything. And then Don is like, you're right, you're right. And then he like mentions that his watch also has like control over the house. And he's like, and it's voice activated. So like, again, I tried to justify why the house is already on by like doing something with like the watch. But like, if you see the run, <coughs> His watch is away from his body. He's not even like finagling with his watch. You should have told Ben to like been like fucking around with his watch or doing something with his watch at that time so that the people, so that the people, you should have told him to like been finagling with his watch while he was running so that the people that have been watching it obsessively do not question why the house is turned on at that point. So he runs outside because he's ready. He's prepared. This is what he has been waiting for. He has been ready. He wants to kill this monster. So he's communicating with the people. He's like, um, he's like, you got something I want. They're like, what do you know? What do you know? They're just trying to figure out what he knows. And he basically lets them know that he doesn't know anything. And so, and then he like threatens them. He's like, listen, like I'm out here without a gun. Like, Think about it, like whatever I whatever I have, like threatening you is designed to kill something much bigger than you. And then they drive off. And he's like, showtime, showtime to his watch, but uh it doesn't go off. And they drive off and they drive away, and then you hear like the little of the little machine gun or the gun that did go off, but it just, it went off delayed. So it works, but it just doesn't work. So we go back to the house and it's Alan and Don and Don is very upset. And Alan is obviously like, just doesn't know what to do. It's like awkward. It's like when you're, when your friend, like when you're at your friend's house and they're like yelling at their parent and it's like, Ooh, you yell at your parents. That's weird. Um, Don starts smashing the control center tablet and then he just leaves he leaves to go get drunk and he leaves alan behind with the smashed tablet so now as a viewer we can assume okay control center has been smashed and the light is now turning on and off by itself alan is noticing the light turned on and then it turned off so the night progresses 
Alan finds some alcohol and he just starts recording and he's just basically going on about like what was this for like he's just he's just he's finishing his story he starts wandering around Don's house Don's room and he's snooping and in the closet he finds this box and in this box there are these cards and uh this box is full of stuff from Jean that like that uh Don is storing like uh it had her it was a bunch of cards that Jean had written for him and her like nurse's ID and all that anyways Don comes home and he's drunk as hell and so like he like he's so drunk that he literally just like leaves his truck running so like Alan has to like go in and like turn it off take out the keys and turn it off and they go back inside and then this personally for me is the climax like the emotional climax of the movie because like holy fuck you guys holy fuck you need to watch the movie for this scene alone like if you want a good cry <laughs> oh shit basically basically don just goes on he just goes off he's like he's like he's like i can't really focus on shit he's like i'm like a don basically goes on to explain that he's like a wild you know like he can't really uh he doesn't feel in control all the time or whatever and gene gene was like was what would ground him like gene was like the thing that would bring him back to reality that would keep him going and like all of that and uh <laughs> out of your moment <laughs> okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna play the audio because like honestly you gotta watch the movie just for this particular performance from this man alone like this particular performance fucking wrecks me he basically just explains to, to alan hi struggle for staying in the moment. And Jean would remind me, she said, come back when she saw me daydreaming. She'd keep me grounded when I'd wander. When she died, everything that, that kept me grounded was gone. It didn't matter what things I had anymore. I couldn't. I tried there I go again. I, I lost track of where I was going. I can tell you this though. This fucking guy. The things that hurt the worst are the ones that you don't see coming. <laughs> I'd like to. No, have... I know. I know. I know what I was gonna say. The boxes. When Jean got sick, she decided to leave me these things. For me to find long after she left. And I put them in these boxes. And they bring me back to reality when I wander, which I often do. Fuck, I can't finish that. <laughs> we can't finish that right now. Basically, you need to watch this movie, you guys, because it's so fucking beautiful. <laughs> He just goes on to explain about like, you know, oh, fuck. The things that hurt the most are the ones that you don't see coming. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck. Okay, I'm not going to continue too much. We're going to end it here, kind of. But there's a whole emotional climax that happens in the scene. And then eventually after like after after we finish crying our eyes out, he, he gets up and he like, uh, he like calms down he tells alan he's like i'm gonna take you home i'll take you back to your car tomorrow like don't worry chill out it's over and then he like stands up and then he's like did i ever tell you why i wanted to kill i so bad did i and he's like alan's like well no like what what this like you know like something about he calls he calls don a monster hunter and then don's like monster hunter I never thought of myself like that. And then he notices that the red light is on. And he's like, 
Oh shit, how long has that thing been on? And then, Alan takes a glance at the light, and then, the gears go a turning, and then Don dies. So, um, from here, uh, Don is gone. He's now with Gene, thank God. Rest in peace. Um, but Alan is now shook. He's like, what the fuck? And then the light turns off. And then it turns back on. And Alan just starts to freak out. He's like, oh, shit. So, you remember the scene when Don had to take a shit and the movie shifted? I feel like that within itself was like a thing, you know, like that was a contained thing within itself because it just ended with it ended with Don dying, but like holy fuck, god damn Don, like god damn. Oh. I just I want to be loved the way that Don loves Gene. I want to be loved like that. But um anyways, um you really should watch the movie because from here, it's like there's like 30 more minutes of the movie and it's Alan trapped in the house and he's trying to get out of the house. I'm not really going to go into detail because I don't really want to spoil like how the movie ends for you. Um, but like, you know, there's like there's like a gun that pops out um, at one point. What else? He like crawls into the room because he gets. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. He gets electrocuted. When he's trying to walk into the room, he's trying to call 911. And then while he's like reaching up to call 911, the light turns on and his leg gets stabbed. Like two blades get thrown to his knee. And then like his hand gets stabbed. And then it's basically just him trying to survive the house. Honestly, that's what it is. He's like soldering his wounds. Um, and then he remembers, like, because the shit has hit the fan. He remembers when Don gave him that little envelope at the beginning of the movie. Remember that Shit's Creek scene? Where he's like, if shit hits the fan, here are your rules. And then in the rules, it's basically like, number one, avoid every single fridge. Avoid bla It's like a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not really getting into detail because this is something that you should watch. If you're into like the thrill, this is when like the thriller really gets into it. After Don dies is when the movie like becomes thriller. So um, prior to that, it is a slow burn, I will say. But like, oh my God, it just fucking tugs at your heartstrings. So, Alan, the rest of the movie is basically just Alan trying to survive. Um, at one point, oh yeah, the walkie-talkie. So, uh, so, the house has come alive. Remember how I said the house becomes a character within itself? The house has come alive, and the walkie now, though, through the walkie, there's like uh, the voice, one of the people, one of the work, one of those, one of the three people that we heard saying, help, 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 somebody, is there anybody there? Please help me, come in, come in, I need help. Basically, I, the monster, has escaped and killed the other people, and this dude's about to die. So, like, Alan is like, oh, my God, I'm here. I need help, too. And the dude's like, uh, you don't understand. And then you just hear, like, Argh. and Alan's like, bro, it's not so chill here, either. So, eventually, Alan is able to crawl out of the window in the house, and he just needs to make it to the truck before the light turns on. But the light turns on, the truck starts shooting at him, Blady comes at him. There's a whole bunch of stuff, and that's where we're going to stop it, because I think that you should watch the movie yourself and figure out what happens in the end. Um, but, you know, like, who wins? Does the house win, or does I win? Because the house is designed to kill I at this point. You have to remember that. But now I, 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 wants to kill Alan? I don't know. I is just, like, a monster that's hungry, I think. I don't know. But... That's the monster movie that I have basically just retold as a love story. But it's not even a love story because you don't really... Oh my god, Don. If you guys finish the movie, there's like a scene towards the end where uh, Don finds number 52. Well, Don doesn't find number 52. Don never finds number 52. Sorry if this was a really, really, really bad retelling of it. This is the first time, as you can tell on my channel, that I have, like, spent this much time on a particular video. And by this much time, I simply mean putting together the screenshots for this uh, presentation. <laughs> uh, I just, I love this movie so much. It's made me cry 
so many times i come back to it so many times my dad won't watch it anymore because he's sick of it my dad's the type that doesn't watch anything more than once like i made him watch it two times and he was over it like right now my dad you want to know what my dad currently watches my dad is currently watching on youtube like uh chinese made movies that have been dubbed like japanese but they have korean subtitles like my dad is on such a niche like media content consumption like he's so niche right now that like i honestly like i don't fucking know and it's because he doesn't repeat the same thing like he's like yeah no i saw that i saw it when it came out i saw that i've seen that already i've seen it already and then the most annoying part is that like he sleeps through all these movies he sleeps through everything but he's seen it because he slept through it and it's like he'll tell you what's happening in the movie and it's like how the fuck do you know what happened in the movie when you slept through it i don't understand him i don't understand my dad i love my dad i love my dad a bits but he's a fucking wild one um so that was the movie all eyes you can stream it somewhere on the internet i bought it on youtube um so you can buy it on youtube too bye oh like and subscribe if you like this and subscribed and comment down below if you saw the movie and if you uh feel the same way that i feel if you think i'm fucking gay for crying the amount of times that i cried because of don's love for his late wife jean uh whatever i don't care and um or unlike it whatever